How many know the Bible does say in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly in Christ Jesus? We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Then in chapter 2 it says, you who were dead in your trespasses and sins. He not only forgave you, but he also raised you. And he not only raised you, he seated you together with Christ in heavenly places. Then it goes on to say, by grace are you saved. Through faith, it is not of yourself, it's a gift of God. We all know that. But do we really live by that? Because the righteous shall live by faith. Okay? So as it is written, we go from faith to faith. So your, your whole, we've got to fight the good fight of faith. Okay? So everything is a faith walk. Faith is to look at the unseen and know God is, God is able to do the unseen into the seen. You know, God is able to do for you exceedingly and abundantly, far and above all that you can think or pray for. Okay? So if you are saved, if you are born again, you are seated in heavenly places, you rule as a king on this earth because you're washed with the blood of Jesus Christ that makes you a king and a priest to rule on this earth. You are together with Christ in heavenly places and you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Remember in John chapter 1 verse 11 talks about Jesus says he came unto his own but his own received him not. But as many as received him unto them gave he the power to be called the children of God as many as believed on his name. Verse 13 says they owe their birth not to blood neither to the will of the flesh because they are born from God or born from above. Then it says verse 14 this word became flesh dwelt amongst us we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Then it says the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And out of that fullness of grace and truth we have all received grace for grace. Okay. So grace approaches us Okay, so uh, Titus 2.11 says, The grace of God has appeared unto all men. So grace faces you every day of your life. Then, with grace facing you, God adds faith for you to receive the grace. And that is called believing power. But if you don't receive the grace, Paul says, as we have received grace, as we have received mercy. So grace comes, but you've got to receive it. But people so badly want to work for something. We want to earn something. We want to live on a merit and a demerit system. If I behave well, I'll get. If I behave bad, I will not get, or even what I have will be taken away from me. Now, that is law, and we're not under law. So Paul says, if you want to do it by law, you will get rewarded. But if you do it by faith, you are not rewarded. You just get everything. But if you do it by works, you'll only get your rewards. But we don't want a reward. We want everything that God has. Blessed with all spiritual blessings. So God is able to do for you exceedingly and abundantly, even far above all that you can think or pray for, according to the power that is at work within you. Okay? So that's why Jesus came. John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus goes on to explain it. He says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up. So talking about the cross and if we look at the crucified Christ we understand the price he paid we will be saved from condemnation from sickness from sin from unrighteousness chapter 3 of Romans starting at verse 21 the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law Although actually it is attested by the law and the prophets. Namely, the righteousness of God which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ. And it is meant for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and are falling short of the honor and glory which God bestows and receives. Verse 24. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God. Listen to the words in the Amplified Bible. Freely and gratuitously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Now, we know the redemptive price is the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to verse 26. 
verse 25, excuse me. Whom God put forth before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and a propitiation by his blood. Now, we talked a couple of weeks ago how, you know, in Moses' tabernacle, they had the Ark of the Covenant with the mercy seat over the Ark. And uh, over the mercy seat was the wings of the cherubims. Okay, underneath the wings was the mercy seat, under the mercy seat was the ark, which had the law of Moses. The law was there to condemn and then judge you, or to judge you and then condemn you. But the Bible says mercy will triumph over judgment. That's why there had to be a mercy seat over the law that had to be sprinkled with blood. But now Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 says, we have come to the sprinkling of blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Okay, so Jesus says to the the Pharisees in Matthew 23 and in Luke 11, he says, the blood of righteous Abel, right through through the blood of the high priest Zechariah, right through to the blood of all the prophets are crying out against this generation. Which generation? The generation that did not receive Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. They rejected him. He says, the blood is crying out. Now, Hebrew says, but the blood of Jesus that speaks from heaven, speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel was crying out for revenge against the generation that rejected Jesus Christ. But the generation that received him, the blood now speaks of her mercy seat. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 through 16 says, Brethren, we can now boldly come to the throne of grace that we can receive mercy to obtain greater grace. For we have a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. One that's been tempted in all areas like as we are, yet without sin. So we can come in no where you are. He understands where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. And the biggest thing is, he does not condemn you for it. He doesn't judge you for it. He says, I understand. Come, I want to help you. Okay? God wants to help you. Okay, so God has sent him forth. Verse 25, whom God put before our eyes as a mercy seat and propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be received through faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He had passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. People come to the Lord Jesus Christ and after they come to Jesus, we get all these funny people that now want to go into your past and see how we can get you free from your past. Here the Bible comes and says, if you believe that Jesus Christ was set forth as the mercy seat of propitiation in his blood, God has passed over and totally ignored anything that happened in your past. If you come to Jesus, if the Son has set you free, you're supposed to be free indeed. Passed over and ignored former sin without punishment. It was to demonstrate and to prove at the present time in the now season that he himself is righteous and that he justifies and accepts as righteous him who has faith in Jesus. God Almighty is righteous. He says, and if you come and believe in Jesus, you are accepted as righteous. Man, 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 let's read. (sighs) Then what becomes of our pride? It is excluded, ruled out entirely on what principle? On the principle of doing good deeds? No, on the principle of faith. For we hold that a man is justified and made upright by faith, independent of and distinctly apart from good deeds. The works of the law. The observance of the law has nothing to do with justification. The foundation, says Paul in 1 Corinthians 3, can no other man lay that is already laid, which is Christ Jesus. Jesus himself said to the Pharisees, the scribes, the hypocrites, he said, the stone that you, the builders, rejected have become the chief cornerstone. Jesus said, I will be the cornerstone. I will be the foundation. And I myself will build my church on my foundation. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. 
How can you go back to the law? I mean, just the verses read now needs to del- deliver you, liberate you, set you free, and understand that all the other stuff is wicked and evil. Did you see that? Totally independent, totally apart. The law has nothing to do with righteousness. The law has nothing to do with justification. The law has nothing to do with salvation. It's by grace and grace alone. It's by faith and faith alone. Man, chapter four. I'm just gonna touch on a few scriptures. I'll just see how the Holy Spirit leads me where we go. Listen to verse eight, amplified. Chapter four. Blessed, happy, to be envied is the person of whose sin the Lord will take no account nor reckon it against him. Whoa. I think we can have a Holy Spirit spasm right now. Go into some Holy Ghost jerk and say, my goodness, is this how much God thinks about me? No, it's how much he thinks about the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Hmm? Listen, in this blessing... Is this blessing then meant for the circumcised or for the uncircumcised? We say that faith was credited to Abram as righteousness. Now verse 10. How then was it credited to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after but before. That is why faith was credited to him as righteousness. But it was credited to him were not written for his sake alone. But they were written for our sakes. Righteousness standing acceptable to God will be granted and credited to us also who believe in God. Who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Who was, listen to this, who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Isaiah 53, who has believed our report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? He has spread out as a root out of dry ground. But he took our infirmities. He took our diseases. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brings us peace was upon him. And with these stripes we are healed. He did everything and you get everything. I remember I preached this series about three years ago. He did and I got. Remember Romans 8 verse 31? You know, what shall we then say of all these things? If God before us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How much more will he not freely give us all things? He was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds. But listen to this. He was raised To secure our justification. Listen to this. Our acquittal. Making our account balance. And absolving us from all guilt before God. Who shall lay any charge against the elect of God? God is it that justifies you. Who shall bring any charge against you? It is God that made you righteous. It is Christ that died for you. That is also raised and is at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for you with his own blood right now. Justified, righteous, acquittal from all guilt and sin. You are free. Chapter 5. Therefore, now here we come Five, six hundred years ago, and we step right into the boots of Martin Luther, sitting as a monk in a little Catholic church in Wittenberg in Germany, and he reads what we're going to read right now. Therefore, since we are justified, since we are acquitted and declared righteous and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him also we have access by faith into this grace in which we firmly stand. Let us rejoice. Let us exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. From the AFM church in South Africa came two brothers by the surname of Duplessis. 
The one was called Mr. Pentecost, David Duplessis, who went to the, the Roman Catholic headquarters and God said to him, I'm going to use you to bring revival amongst the Catholics, which we call today the charismatic revival. And David Duplessis wrote a little book, God has no grandsons. God has no grandsons. In other words, you cannot get anything from another father or another mother. God has only children and sons. So if I receive Jesus, I become God's son. I step out of the realm of the flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I gotta be born again and enter the kingdom. Then I call God Father and He calls me Son. God has no grandsons, so I can't inherit from Grandmother Lucy. <laughs> Let's jump to verse 7. Now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor, someone might even dare to die. But God... But God, that's the only but that you've got to have in your life, is but God. Not when God speaks, you say but. The only but is but God. Okay, listen to this. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by Him from the indignation and wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, is It is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrection life. So, while I was a sinner, before I accepted him, in God's idea, Christ died for you. Now, if I accept that he died for me, now there's nothing of my past in God's memory. He says, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Neither your fathers and your forefathers. That's the law of Moses, sucker. Okay. And it's for those who hate him. If while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. Now he has acquitted, set me free, justified from everything that was in my past. Now, if any man is now in Christ, he's a totally new creation. The old things have passed away and everything. Now I stand here brand new. But it didn't get rid of sin out there. It just got rid of my sin, which was there. Now, if I say I have no sin, I lie. But if I now sin, I have an advocate with the Father. So he says, now that he's raised from the dead, he will daily deliver us from the dominion of sin by his resurrection life. That's why Romans 8 says, he died for us. Hey, whoa, 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 he's even raised for us. Hey, he's at the right hand of the Father interceding. So if you miss it, he says, all the time he looked for an intercessor and he found none then he said I myself will become the arm of the Lord I will clothe myself with righteousness and I will go and set them free verse 11 not only so but we also rejoice and exalt glory in glory God okay through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now received and enjoy reconciliation therefore as sin came into the world through one man and death as a result of sin. So death also spread to all men. No one being able to stop it or to escape its power because all men sinned. To be sure sin was in the world before ever the law was given. But sin is not charged to men's account where there is no law. Yet death held sway from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not themselves transgress as Adam did. Okay, Adam was a type 
of the one who was to come in reverse the former destructive the letter saving. But God's free gift Amen. is not at all to be compared to the trespass. Wow. I'll try that one again. God's free gift. Now remember he's saying sin and death entered by this one man. But the free gift of God is not to be compared to the one that trespassed. His grace, listen to this in there. His grace is out of all proportion. <laughs> okay, I've got some people here in the front. His grace is out of proportion. His grace is out of all proportion, says the Amplified Bible. To who? To the fall of man. So God says, I don't care how deep Adam fell. The grace that I'm going to show is out of proportion. You can't even compare the fall to the free gift of God. You can't compare the sin to the righteousness. You can't compare the death to the life. I have come to give you life. Yeah. Woo. That's it, man. Come on. man. Hmm? You get it? For if many died through one man's falling away, his offense, much more profusely that God's grace and the free gift through the undeserved favor of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound and overflow to and for many. Nor is the free gift at all to be compared to the effect of that small man sin. Yeah, thank you. Paul says to Timothy, get away from these people that are going to genealogies. He says, you must actually speak out against people that search into genealogies. What did, what did your father do? I don't want to let anybody run away, so I'll not tell you what he did. Huh? Oh, you know, my family tree. We can see it. You must be an evolutionist. Because it's apes that's running around in trees. Hmm? Do you want to know our family tree? I am the vine and you are the branches. Anyone that abide in me will bear much fruit. Full stop. Do you want to be in the tree? I am the vine, you are the branches. Bide in me, and you will bear much fruit. For the sentence following the trespass of one man brought condemnation. Now remember where we're heading to. There is therefore now no condemnation. If I have no condemnation, I'll get anything from God. Whereas the free gift following many transgressions brings justification for if because of one man's trespass, death reigns through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through this one man, Jesus Christ. One transgression and the whole human race was condemned to sin and death. One man is obedient and for many transgressions you are justified. I think that's why it calls it overflowing. That's why it calls it, you know, uh, I don't know if you have the capacity to contain it. I can see it. Hmm? Well then, let's just read on. It's so good we can just read on. As one man's trespass, or to condemnation, so one man's act of righteousness will lead to the acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Amen. Jesus, we thank you. For just, he repeats it in different sentences. Listen for just as by one man's disobedience many were constituted sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be constituted righteous. 
But then the law came in to expand and increase the trespass, to making it more apparent and exciting opposition. <laughs> but where the sin now increased and abounded, God came and His grace has surpassed it, increased more and superabounded, so that just as sin has reigned in death, so grace, His unearned and undeserved favor, might reign also through righteousness, which issues in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. One man came and died to give us a free gift. Now all are righteous with no remembrance of any sin that you ever did. Adam condemned one sin. No matter how many you did, you say, Jesus, and he says, you're free. you got no past. And even the life you now live, daily I will deliver you. If you sin, I will be your advocate. So let nobody judge you. Let nobody condemn you. God compares the Christian life to eagles that soars high into the presence of the sun. So imperial eagles and majestic eagles have got two sets of eyelids because they fly so high. So if they get into the presence of the sun, they flip a second set of eyelids that acts like sunglasses. Right? And because they fly so high, they have no fleas on them. No kokomotorikis or the Ticks and gnats and lice and dice and mice and stuff. You know. mm-hmm. They say if you capture an eagle and put it in a cage, it becomes the dirtiest bird within a matter of days. So the minute you put rules for Christians, they become dirty. They always need to find out how they can sneak away by not being caught. Do you get it? Go to, the, go to the Lord churches that have all these rules. I'll show you a church full of sin. Because everybody's ducking and diving because they're full of lice and fleas and mice and thrice and twice. Mm-hmm. Um, Romans 5.20 in the message. Boy. All that passing laws against sin did was to produce more lawbreakers. But sin didn't and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness wow. we call grace. When it is sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. There is therefore, because of what we just read, because of this, therefore, there is therefore, because of what we read, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live not by the law, but by the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. This is for everyone who will accept the sacrifice. Verse 31, what shall we then say of these things? If God is now for us, who can be against us? He did not even spare his own son, but gave him a... How will he not freely give us all things freely? Who shall bring in any condemnation, any judgment? Who shall lay any charge against God's leg? He justified you, made you righteous, died for you. He's raised and sat at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. What shall we now then say? Of persecutions and tribulations. No man in all these things are more than a conqueror. Because Christ's love is proven to me that if he died for me while I was a sinner, he will deliver me from this wrath now that he's risen. Do you understand the story? But as from verse 18 in Romans 8, he says, Now the creation is subject to vanity because of that one man's sin that we talked about. He says, Now all creation is now waiting. For the glorious manifestation and the liberty of God's sons. So creation is waiting for somebody that will receive this sacrifice totally. I think Martin Luther brought us a glimpse and we got glimpses from then. But what if we totally take the grace message? 
We say, my goodness, this grace means I am now God's son. He is now my father. He calls me son. I call him father. And there is no other genealogy. Nothing that can bind me, tie me down, put me in bondage. No. Corbus. In Psalm, in, in Psalm 82, there's a scripture that Jesus quotes in John 10. We've quoted a lot lately. Jesus speaks to the people. He's the shepherd. He's the door. And he's going to lay down his life. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees started opposing him. And they said, hey, who are you to put yourself equal with God? Hmm? You ready? So Jesus says, I'll just throw the ball in your court. Does not your law say? I say. You see, but many people don't hear the I say. Does not your law say? I say, you are God's. John 10, 34, quoting from Psalm 82, verse 6. Then who are you to point a finger at me if I say, I am God's son? 34, 35, 36, John chapter 10. Who are you to point a finger at me if I say I'm God's son? If your very law that you cling to says, I already said you are God's. God's sons. Who owe their birth not to their forefathers. John 1, 13. Because they are now born from above. They are born from Almighty God. They have a new father. They have a new genealogy. It says, father, elder brother, and many brothers. Because Hebrews 2 says, that's why he's not ashamed to call us brethren. So it's the father, an elder brother, and many other brothers. Full stop. Genealogy fulfilled. So, if it's true, and it must be true, all the sin that you, your father, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother, and if you end up, you're going to end up with Adam. I mean, why don't you go right back to the root? Why do you stop at Aunt Lucy? I mean, the this, this stuff goes back. And you'll end up with Adam. He was your first forefather. If God says he has passed over and totally ignored that stuff because of the grace and the fact that Christ died for you, how is it that you want to now come and do the law thing? If God has already by grace says, you're righteous, you're justified, you're free. Amen. Hmm? That's good. Luke chapter 3, Matthew chapter 1. Verse 21. So now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Amen. Now listen here. In Deuteronomy, God said, I want you to have an open heaven. But because of the law, you will not be able to keep the law. That's why your heavens will always be brass. It will not be opened unto you. Okay? This is what God said to Moses. Uh, I want you to have an open heaven. But because you were disobedient, you got the law. And because nobody can keep the law, your heavens will always be closed. So here comes Jesus. Now remember the whole story. Baptize me, John. No, Jesus, it's you that should baptize me. Uh Uh-uh. John, if you baptize me, we're going to fulfill all righteousness. Okay. We're going to fulfill. John, baptize me. The minute I'm baptized, righteousness will be fulfilled. So, when he came up out of the water, bam, the heavens were open. Now God smiles on creation again. All righteousness is fulfilled. Everybody that now believes in this is my son will be righteous because all righteousness fulfilled. Awesome. In John 1, they refer to the same portion of story 
and John is talking there, he says, and Jesus spoke to them, he said, are you amazed how I speak to Nathaniel and said, I saw you under a fig tree? He said, you must watch me now. From now on, you will see heaven open. If the rulers, we've quoted it so many times, of this world knew. Now we know this world was the Jewish world of Jesus' time where he talks about this generation, this generation, this. If the rulers of this world, the rulers in the synagogue, with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, if they knew, because that's why Nicodemus came to ask him, he was a ruler of a synagogue. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. Nicodemus was the head of the Pharisees, a ruler of the synagogue. They came to Jesus, and now he says, if they knew who this king of glory was, they would never have crucified him. Because they're waiting for their Messiah. So if they knew it, they would not have. But he said, I will put a spirit of slumbering over them because of their stubbornness. That is verse 7, 8 of 1 Corinthians 2. Then he goes on to verse 9. As it is written, the eye hath not seen, the ear hath not heard, neither has it come up in the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. Then He goes on to, 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 to verse 16. He says, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay? So, Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you which was in Christ. What was His mind? He thought it was not a robbery to be equal with God. Do you got it? Who are you to make yourself equal with God? Well, is it a trouble if your law already says, I see you are God? Is it a trouble if I say, I'm the son of God? So where is it quoted from? From Isaiah 64. As it's written, we must go find out where it's written. Oh, that you would rent the heavens and come down. So that as fire will cause water to boil. Those things that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no man has ever perceived by heart, that you will work wondrously on the behalf of those who patiently waits for you. So through the years, people have been waiting, they're still waiting. But there's a few that, oh, John, baptize me. No, Jesus, you that should baptize me, John. If you baptize me today, we're going to fulfill all righteousness. This will mean anybody that now believe in me, they will have total acquittal of sin. There will be no remembrance of their past lives. They will be new creations. Because I've just come to open the heavens and bring the second man into existence. And the Holy Ghost, verse 22 Descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. Okay. When he came out of the water, heavens opened. So righteousness fulfilled, so Isaiah fulfilled, heaven is now open. Now we can get what we never thought of. Then God spoke said, this is my son. He says, but the people supposed it was the son of Joseph. So, okay, son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matat, which was the son of Levi, which is the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Matathias, which is the son of Amos, which is the son of Noam, which is the son of Ishli, which was the son of Negev, which was the son of Math, which was the son of Matathias, which is the son of Samea, which is the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Johanna, which was the son of Resha, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salatiel, which is the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Edi, which was the son of Kosam. Let's just jump to verse 38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So there's the cycle completed. One man came son of God, transgressed everybody now sinners. So creation waits for the sons of God 
to come. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. So from one man, all is now in sin. But by one man, all will be taken out of sin and put into righteousness. Baptize me, John, that we can fulfill all righteousness. As soon as he came up out of the water, they lied. They said, he was supposed to be the son of Joseph, which was the son of the son of son of son of, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So in that genealogy, they write and put the whole completed cycle. So chapter 4 starts with, then he went full of the spirit into the wilderness, tempted, verse 14, came back in the power of the spirit, verse 18, picked up the scroll, found the place where it is written, spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Then Jesus sat down and said, this day, this scripture, I'll put one word in, is also fulfilled. Right here in your midst. Okay? Then he walked out of that place where he just read the scroll, and demon-possessed people were the first in the road. And they screamed, we know who you are. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right? You got that? Okay, now we're going to do it in Matthew. I'm going to bring you the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. He is the son of David, which was the son of Abraham. Full stop. So he says, uh, this is the only two that I will acknowledge in my earthly ancestry. <laughs> because Adam got the promise of a seed. Then Abram, uh, David got the promise repeated. Out of your generation will come a seed that will sit on the throne. So Jesus, son of David. Jesus says, you know what? I'm from God. They say, no, you're a Samaritan. You're from the devil. Jesus said, uh-uh, you are from the devil. They said, no, Abram is our father. He said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Abram is not your father. If Abram were your father, you would have believed me. Because Abram believed me. He said, how could Abram believe you? You're not even 50. And our father Abram is dead long ago. He said, eh. Hey, before Abram was, I am. Said Abram longed to see my day, and he saw it. So the gospel was first preached to Abraham. So Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. So he cuts out the law, he cuts out circumcision, he cuts out rules, because Abram was found worshiping the moon and the sun. And God said, Abram, in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply. Abram said, I believe. God says, you're righteous. He said, so come, A.B., let's bring you the gospel. One day I will come as the seed and I will shed my blood. My body will be broken and this will be what will happen. So here comes David. Prophet comes to me and says, uh, You've got blood on your hands, David. So David wants to go to God. And as he starts praying, he says, My hands are clean before you, my God. My righteousness is forever standing before you. Because when he wanted to open his mouth, God says, David, you are righteous. Now remember, David had no temple. David had no tabernacle. Oh, but the tabernacle of David will be rebuilt. No, they tried to rebuild te- the temple of Solomon. That's what they tried to rebuild. But God says, I will return and rebuild the temple of the tabernacle of David. So what's the tabernacle of David? He says it. The sure mercies. The grace that David received. So David comes. He's got blood in his hand. God says, ah, your hands are clean, son. Says, Thank you. Oh, Lord you're righteous. Okay. Okay. okay, let's read. Abram was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. <laughs> Judah became the father of Perez. Do you know who Perez was? He was the guy that was also a twin brother, like Jacob and Esau. So the crookery is going on. That's why people get this generational thing. We're going to nail it tonight to the cross of Christ. It's nailed already. 
So Teresa's brother came out. And the nursing mother, the midwife stood there and she put a little red tag around his foot when he came out. Bam! And Perez said, Ewan, are you not going to go out? Are you not going to go out first? I want this stuff. Unborn babies. Perez was already a crook. Pull that other guy back and slipped out of the womb. Bam! said, I'm Perez. Perez meaning breakthrough. And the midwife says, how did you break through when you were not out first? Now remember, it was a very big thing in Bible days to be first born. Hmm? I'm talking about the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Aram was the father of Abinadab. Abinadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Oh my goodness. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Now, Rahab was a prostitute. She was a whore. No, that's bad. Yeah, she sat on the wall of the city. And every man that passed by just went to bed with her. Say the book. Oh, this is the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Rahab was the mother of Boaz. Boaz was an Edomite that went into his harvest field and Ruth was picking up the seed. And then he took this woman that was picked up and he slept with her. And after he slept with her, Obed was born. (laughs) What's the sermon all right till now? I'm going to bring you to a very exciting point. Rahab, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. King David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. (laughs) King David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was the wife of of Uriah. <laughs> King David was the father of Solomon, who was the child of Bathsheba, who was the wife of Uriah. Uriah for the American people. Liver, Hanada. So David was on his rooftop, and on the other rooftop, was Baywatch. (laughs) And David said, my, my, my. (laughs) Solomon was the father of Rehob, Rehob, Boam, Rehobium, or Rehobium. He was the father of Asa. You know what Asa did? He took the gold and the silver from the temple and he gave it to the king of Syria to fight with him against the king of Israel. Hmm? Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, the father of Uzi, and Ahaz. He was the father of Ahaz. You know what Ahaz was? He took silver and gold from the temple. He shut the Holy of Holies so that nobody could get in there, and he made his own little temples for the people to worship God. True, 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 true. Let's just jump right down to verse 18 in the Amplified Bible. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place under these circumstances. If you are born again, you owe your birth not to blood. You are born from above. I'll just throw one scripture in. in, in, We started there with 
Romans chapter 3. If you go to Romans chapter 2, he says, you know who's a Jew? Not those that say they are Jews. Yep. Neither those that are circumcised. Size. You know who are Jews? The people who have been circumcised in their hearts. They are the real Jews. Then he goes on, refers to Deuteronomy 30, where God says, the day will come when I will circumcise your hearts. And you will call me father and I will call you children. So Colossians 2 says, we have a circumcision not made with hands, but circumcision of the heart. Amen. That's by being baptized into Christ. And he, then he goes on in Colossians 2, he says, let nobody put you in bondage again. He says, because the letter of guilt that stood against you was nailed to the cross. You were free from anything that could ever be done. Free. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I'm free. I have no past. I have no future. I am. In Christ. I am what I am because of the grace of God. I am a son of God. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I am born again. I am. I am. I am. I was not born again. I am born again. I was not washed. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I was not saved. I am saved. Come on, everything about God in you is I am. I am. I am. Jesus says in John chapter 8, he says, uh, you know, when he talked about them, about if the Son has set you free, you'll be free. They said, no, we're not slaves. He said, you don't even know how you are in slavery because you cling to the law of Moses. Now, I say to you, because you have the law, you are slaves. Because the law makes you a sinner. And he says, the slave cannot stay in the house. But the son will stay in the house. Man, man, remember... I said it, I mean, this thing is so awesome. When the prodigal said, when he came to himself, in my father's house are bread enough to spare. The servants in my father's house has more to spare than I have to eat. I will go back to my father and I will say to my father and the father will say, my son. And he will say, I can't remember that you did anything. Let's get you new shoes, new ring, new robe. Let's have a party because you're my son. <laughs> Father, but look what I did. He says, I can't recall. <laughs> did the father say anything about the son's wicked life? He said, no, my son was dead. Now he's alive. <laughs> so awake out of your sleep. Let Christ shine upon you. Yeah. So, so the son is in the house. So Galatians 4 says, but if the heir is a child, he's exactly the same as a servant. Even if he's the heir of the whole estate. Till the time appointed of the father. But that appointed time came. When God sent forth his son to be born of a woman that was under the law. Didn't say Jesus was under the law. He was born out of a woman that was under the law. To redeem us that were under the law so that we can now receive the adoption of sons. And because we are now sons, God has put the spirit of his son in us crying my father, my father. And if you are now sons, you are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. If you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work. Now the work is not what you work for, it's Romans do you take the law or do you take the grace? Verse 18. Amplified. You must know that you were redeemed. Remember what we read in Romans. You were ransomed from the useless 
fruitless way of living inherited by tradition from your forefathers. Not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but you were purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Twenty-three, you have been born again by not from a mortal seed, but immortal, the ever-living Word of God. 1988 or somewhere around there. I can't remember. I think it was about 1988. Uh, I woke up out of a dream, and the dream became a vision while I was alive. And I saw Christ on the cross. And I saw people jumping towards the cross. And as they jumped, their faces turned into hyena faces. And as they jumped, they pulled pieces of meat out of the body of Christ. And Jesus said, my people are not satisfied with my sacrifice. Because they keep on referring to their past and I have nailed everything to the cross. And they are trying to pull pieces out of my body that's already been crucified. And then he gave me Colossians 2. The letter of guilt that stood against us. He canceled it. He blotted it out. He wiped it away. He took it totally out of the way by nailing it to his cross. And he said, if you want to get to him, over my dead body. Yes. 